ahead of the storm. When severe weather strikes. When it came, it happened quick. Every second counts. The weather watch never stops. Fox 61, getting you prepared for whatever comes your way. Hurricanes and hail. Topple trees to tornadoes. That's wild. Knowing what to do can mean the difference between life and death. It takes team coverage when severe weather strikes in Connecticut. Thanks so much for joining us from Wickham Park in Manchester. I'm Chief Meteorologist Rachel Frank. And I'm Sarah Sanchez. Summer is almost here. It's time to soak up the sun and get outside. But summer also has some of the most dangerous months of the year. That's why Fox 61 is getting you prepared ahead of the storm. Will the summer weather cooperate with your vacation plans? We'll break down the sizzling season ahead. And when minutes matter, tornado watch, flash flooding, and thunderstorm warnings. The steps you need to take in a weather emergency. Plus, hail happenings. What's the science behind it in the summer? And a very active hurricane season is expected. How to prepare your homes before and after it strikes. We'll give you the tools and show you some of ours so you can get the weather warning you need ahead of the storm. Cannonball! Summer in Connecticut. Beaches, barbecues, watermelon. And in the weather world, summer starts June 1st. I know, your calendar disagrees. The meteorological seasons are based off temperature and the warmest three months of the year are June, July, and August. So. We call that summer. The astronomical seasons, now this is the one that you have on your calendar, has to do with the Earth's position. And on the summer solstice, the northern hemisphere is tilted most towards the sun, giving us the most direct sunlight and the longest day. All that extra sunlight helps the temperatures soar, and after a roller coaster spring, temperatures finally start to consistently warm up. So what about 2022? Will we have a lot of beach and pool days or will you need to bring the party inside due to stormy weather? This year, the outlook is clear. Get the AC tuned up. This summer looks like a hot one or at least above average. While we are gearing up for our second La Nina summer, this isn't necessarily a repeat of last year. Studies show La Nina has no correlation to summer temperatures in Connecticut. Instead, it's all about the North Atlantic Oscillation and Arctic Oscillations, global weather patterns that can change the jet stream's orientation. We also have to consider recent trends and climate change. All seasons are warming in Connecticut, and a warmer summer is a pretty safe bet, since seven out of the last 10 summers have been above average. Warm water temperature off the East Coast and in Long Island Sound can also play a role keeping temperatures milder, especially at night. Then of course, there's our long range computer models, which are all strangely in agreement. Seriously, that never happens. I feel like I should play the lottery. Speaking of the lottery, sometimes summer rain can feel like hitting the jackpot. Outside of tropical storms, most rain comes from individual thunderstorms, which can leave some towns drenched and others parched for long periods of time. While there's not a clear signal this summer, the Climate Prediction Center is leaning slightly towards above average rainfall. An anticipated busy tropical season may play into that prediction. Also on our radar, so to speak, severe weather may bring you inside a few times this summer. Recent La Nina summers have seen more reports of both damaging winds and large hail compared to average. So there you have it. This summer is going to be a roaster and I'm sure people will be heading to the beach to cool off. But beware, one of the top causes of weather related deaths is rip currents. Uh, meteorologist Ryan Breton has more on how to spot them and what to do if you're caught in one. Well, we all look forward to a day at the beach in the summer, but they can quickly turn tragic if you're caught in a rip current. Fortunately, Long Island Sound most of the time is protected from big rip currents and big waves, but our southeastern shoreline and over into Rhode Island and the south coast of Massachusetts can be much more susceptible to big waves from hurricanes and storms as they pass offshore. One important thing to know as you head to the beach, how to spot a rip current, and it's the gap between the white caps. So how do you break free from a rip current? Well, a lot of times people are tempted to turn around and swim against them, but that's not what you should do. You'll often tire yourself out in that circumstance. 
and that's usually when things end poorly. Instead, what you should do is break the grip of the rip by swimming out with it and then eventually parallel to the shoreline. That will give you a chance to break out of its grip and you'll also not tire yourself out in the process. So remember this summer, it's the gap between the white caps, swim out and parallel to the shore. That's how you'll break the grip of the rip car. Another big threat when it comes to severe weather is down trees and power lines. It takes winds between 55 to 65 miles per hour to topple trees. Meteorologist Rachel Piscatelli has more on the action you can take to protect your property before the next big storm heads Connecticut's way. Trees can create a beautiful landscape with vibrant colors, but when severe weather strikes, they can create a headache too. People shouldn't wait to, to hear that a storm's coming to have their trees inspected. By the time that, that storm comes, it's too late. Unfortunately, we've seen it many times before. The right gust of wind knocking down trees, leaving power outages, dangerous driving conditions, or damage to your home and property. So, I spoke to Joe Braga, owner of B&M Tree Services in West Hartford, for some advice. Spotting some of these signs early may save you and your wallet. And it starts from looking at the bottom. If you start seeing uh, you know, mushrooms, you know, any kind of you know, fungal coming out of there, it tells you some kind of root problem. Fungal growth leads to rot, weakening the base and the roots of the tree. And the roots are the anchor. For that matter, in the top 12 to 18 inches of soil. Soil that is too wet, coupled with harsh winds, can also allow the roots to fail. So proper drainage may be something to think about. Now look up and take a peek from the limbs to the leaves. Everything should be nice and green like this one right now. If, you're, if your leaves are yellowing, you have an issue. Check for dead limbs, not producing any leaves either, or decay on branches and stems. The large limbs come down to a windstorm that had you know, large decay, big cavities in it. If they move that limb or maybe even move that tree, they wouldn't have lost you know, half of their garage. Understanding the types of trees on your property too, like a maple tree or ash trees, which were impacted by insects. Like right now, you know, the emerald ash borer killed all the trees. Well, those trees all got to come down. But even a healthy tree that's top heavy could pose a problem. A tree with a large canopy, it's like having a big sail up there. There's a lot of factors at play here. So if you think your trees need to be pruned or you're unsure, you should contact a tree expert. I'm meteorologist Rachel Piscatelli, Fox 61 News. Like tropical storms Elsa and Henri last summer, soaking rains and downpours caused waters to rise, creating rivers and streams and roads and backyards. So what do you do if you're caught in flash flooding? It's every homeowner's nightmare. It can happen in a flash. Flash flooding can be costly and dangerous. In order to figure out if we're going to see flash flooding, here are some of the things that we take into consideration. I know this one seems like a no brainer, but first we need to know, is it gonna rain heavily? And this can be from rain from a nor'easter, rain from a tropical storm, widespread areas of rain, or from small scale events, like just a slow moving thunderstorm. We also need a little bit of context. How wet is the ground? Because if it's already saturated, it won't be able to absorb any more water that falls from the sky. Our rivers and streams already high because additional rain may be just enough to kind of send everything over the edge. And we also need to know where that rain is occurring. If it's occurring in rural areas, maybe trees and plants will have an easier time kind of absorbing that rainfall than rain falling over a city where streets and storm drains might be kind of clogged up and make that flooding more pronounced. Now I know no, this seems really dramatic and a little bit cheesy because it rhymes, but there's a method to the madness. Turn around, don't drown. The number one cause of deaths from thunderstorms is not tornadoes, it's not damaging winds, and it's not lightning. It's actually flooding. And I think one of the reasons why is because it takes very little water for you to lose control of your car. Only a foot of fast moving water can cause you to lose control of your car. And maybe you're thinking, okay, well I have an SUV or I have a truck. It only takes 18 to 24 inches of water to make you lose control of that. So turn around, find a safer route. No matter what is going on, it's gonna be safer than driving in water. And it can be deeper than you think. Even if you think you know the area well, you're putting yourself at risk and the lives of first responders at risk too. Still ahead, 
We talked a lot about different instances of severe weather. Coming up, the danger above that doesn't fall from the sky. Plus, tornadoes touching down, wreaking havoc in your neighborhoods, trees tossed, cars crushed, the steps to take to keep you and your family safe. And a weather element that's small, but the impact on your wallet is huge. The science behind hail in the summer when ahead of the storm continues. Welcome back. Severe weather isn't just about storms and high winds. There's one element we haven't mentioned yet, a silent killer, if you will, extreme heat. And it can be dangerous for people of all ages, especially if you're not prepared. Meteorologist Sam Sam Perry takes a look. Hi everyone, happy summer. We start off the month of June. It's the meteorological summer. We also take a look at the high heat and air quality. And it affects everyone, how we live and breathe in. The most common form of air pollution is ground level ozone. That ozone is formed when you have hot days, temperatures in the 80s and 90s, and it reacts with the sunlight, causes the chemicals and pollutants to mix together downwind to form ground level ozone. And how do you know when you're going to have a bad air quality? Well, we'll issue the air quality alert that the Department of Energy and Environmental Protection issues those alerts, and then we also uh, disseminate that to the public. Zero to 50 is good. When you see the yellows, it's moderate. When you see the oranges, that is when it's unhealthy for sensitive groups and so forth. It's unhealthy for everybody if you have a real bad ozone day. Sunlight plus the volatile organic compounds and NOx emissions from motor vehicles, exhaust, power plants, industrial facilities. All these pollutants get together in the summertime and when it's real hot, that's when that ozone will form on uh, our area and it comes into our region when you get a southwest flow and high pressure off to our south and that brings up all the pollution and the ozone settles and that's when we have air quality alerts. We will keep you posted on any alerts coming up this summer. Now to the difference between a weather watch and a weather warning. You'll get different watches and warnings all summer long, like on your Fox 61 News app. A watch means conditions are favorable for severe weather. In other words, the atmosphere is ready and that severe weather could happen. So know where to seek shelter, be prepared, and have a way to get warnings like enabling push alerts on the Fox 61 app on your phone. When a warning is issued, it's time to take cover now. It means a storm has been spotted or detected on radar and severe weather may already be occurring in your area. And in a tornado warning, it's important to know these tips to stay safe. When you're at home, go to the basement or your smallest center room. Stay away from all windows and cover yourself. If you're in a high rise in the city, go to the lowest floor possible or seek shelter in interior stairwells. Usually tornadoes in Connecticut are an EF0 or EF1 in intensity, lower on the damage scale. But 11 years ago today, New England got the big one and it was way too close to home. An EF3 tornado wreaked havoc just on the other side of the Connecticut border, devastating parts of the southern Massachusetts region. June 1st, 2011, a tornado starts right over the Connecticut River and moves into the southern section of downtown Springfield. Winds were up to 160 miles an hour. The tornado left behind over $230 million in damages and claimed three lives. And this past May marked four years since four EF1 tornadoes hit Connecticut, including one that hit Sleeping Giant State Park, which closed it for several months. Towns affected included Hamden, Oxford, Winstead, and Barkhamston. The storms also produced large hail, which damaged cars and homes. Just before crossing Route 10, the swirling winds of that tornado transitioned into straight-line winds of a microburst. Tornadoes pick things up, while microbursts push things over. When you think about severe weather, tornadoes may come to mind first, but a microburst or straight-line winds are more common and can cause damage over a bigger area. To understand how a microburst forms, let's go to the pool. I know it seems random, but bear with me. When you get out of the water on a hot summer day, your skin starts to feel cool. But why? As water goes from a liquid to a gas, it requires heat. You then experience that heat loss through a process called evaporational cooling. Well, that same thing is happening to water inside the cloud of a thunderstorm, extending thousands of feet up in the air. As water droplets evaporate, the air inside the cloud cools, and as you know, hot air rises. 
So that means cold air sinks. And with this process occurring quickly and on such a grand scale, it sinks really fast, hitting the ground and spreading out in all directions. This can cause downed trees, power lines, and in extreme cases, winds up to 150 miles per hour. A microburst is a downdraft that's less than two and a half miles in scale. A macroburst is even larger. On May 15, 2018, a three-mile wide macroburst hit Brookfield. If damage is caused by a microburst, you'll often see big uprooted trees knocked over in the same direction. Conversely, if it's tornado damage, it's going to be more chaotic with big uprooted trees overlapping instead of being knocked down the same way. Forecasting abilities and technologies have improved drastically over the past 50 years, but deadly and destructive weather is still common. The deadliest form of weather is flooding. Believe it or not, just six inches of water can sweep you away, and 12 inches of water can sweep your car away. The second deadliest is lightning, and you may be surprised to hear tornadoes are the third deadliest when it comes to severe weather. Now to the costliest form of severe weather, and number one is hail. So the immediate damage to your home, your car, and your other property can add up pretty quickly. The National Weather Service uses everyday objects to compare hail sizes. Some of the smaller sizes are dime, penny, nickel, and quarter. A storm is considered severe when hail is quarter sized. That's one inch in diameter or larger. Large hail comes from strong storms, and strong storms produce strong updrafts or rapidly rising air. As air rises, it cools, and in the case of a thunderstorm, rising air can cool enough that it turns water droplets into ice, otherwise known as hail. In a severe thunderstorm, the updraft is so strong that it repeatedly lifts that hail, adding layers and layers of ice. The growing hailstone falls to the surface when the storm can no longer support the weight. So the stronger the storm, the larger the hail, and the more damage done to your property. Still ahead, preparing for minimal impact. Don't let severe weather take you by surprise. How to prepare your home before and after a storm. Plus... Well, we were watching Fox 61 weather, and we saw it getting a little crazy on the radar. The Fox 61 tools to have to get the weather warnings you need when ahead of the storm continues. When it comes to severe weather, preparation is key to staying safe and minimizing impact. Meteorologist Matt Scott has tips on how to prepare your home ahead of the storm. Anybody who's lived in Connecticut knows that these waters of the Long Island Sound, as calm as they are now at the beginning of hurricane season, can turn very quickly as a hurricane comes to New England, which leads to the big question, are you ready? Page's hardware has been a mainstay on Guilford Green for years. For the last 26, Amy Earls has been there. And if a hurricane is moving this way, she can count on one thing. It's always crazy right before storms. After all, most people admit that when it comes to a storm, preparedness falls by the wayside. A recent study by Groundworks found that only 26% of people surveyed were very prepared for a storm. And that includes the basics. Flashlight and batteries are definitely the first thing to come to mind, and you need to make sure that the batteries go with the flashlight. Water? Check. Coolers? Check. Charging your cell phone? Making sure you have a cell phone charger if you have any backup um, power banks. Those are good to charge. But believe it or not, our one focus for shoreline residents at the start of hurricane season is not just what you buy, but where you put it that's just as important. Her suggestion? A box full of supplies that for now is out of sight and mind for good reason. You need to have the things handy when it's dark and the power is out um, in general. So a place that you know, whether it's a drawer, whether it's a spot in the garage, spot in the basement. If you could offer customers today at the beginning of storm season any bit of advice that you've learned in all the years you've been here, what would it be? Don't procrastinate. <laughs> Buy the stuff now, then we can reorder for other people and then you don't, you're not stuck when the storm comes. Don't be those folks that wait till the last minute. Exactly. We know that there are going to be people who are panicking, who feel like they don't have a flashlight or batteries or gas cans, things like that. I know. I'm like you. Life gets in the way. But at the beginning of hurricane season, there is no time like the present to take care and get all the things you need so that if a hurricane does come this way, 
you're ready. Not only do you have to worry about your home's impact during a hurricane, but you also have to keep in mind flooding if you live near water. Flooding in Manchester after Hurricane Henri caused Charter Oaks ball fields and bleachers to swim. Even after the water returns to its banks, the danger on rivers isn't over. While the surface of the water may look normal, there can be a strong undercurrent, floating debris, and the river banks can be unstable, making it dangerous to walk near rivers that have recently flooded. So please make sure you take the time to explain this to your kids who might be out exploring this summer. When severe weather hits Connecticut, we hit the road. The Fox 61 storm tracker is packed with cutting edge technology that can take you right into the heart of a storm as it's happening. Meteorologist Rachel Piscitelli gives you a look inside. I'd like to introduce you to my trusty sidekick in our unofficial sixth member of our weather team, the storm tracker. Equipped with multiple cameras on the inside and the outside, we can show you real-time conditions with a click of a button. It's that easy. Our 360 camera has us covered from all angles, from hail to heavy rain to gusty winds. It even made it through a hurricane. And my favorite part, it keeps us dry. Plus, Wi-Fi and a workstation in the back. And take a look at these tires. Now, we're always taking safety into account when we hit the road in the storm tracker, and now would be a great time for you to prepare and safely store your emergency kit in your car too. So what should you pack in that emergency car kit for this summer? Let's start with the essentials. First, you want a first aid kit with a blanket, aspirin, duct tape. It's always good to have a cell phone charger with you, some bottled water, snacks, and a rain poncho. It takes team coverage and viewers like you at home to help give us a better understanding of what severe weather looks like in your neighborhood. And we share your photos right here on Fox 61. Take a photo and send it to us with the Near Me feature on the Fox 61 News app. It helps us understand and see the impact any storm has on Connecticut. And it allows us to share that information with the rest of our community. Find the Near Me button on the bottom right, tap the Share With Us button, upload your photos and videos and tell us about it and then submit success. That's how we get your photos right here on the air. The last seven hurricane seasons have been busier than average, so will that continue? Meteorologist Ryan Breton has what tropical weather experts are saying. Hurricane season is here, beginning each year on June 1st, although sometimes there can actually be a tropical system or two before the official start date to the season. This is a look at tropical system frequency through the hurricane season, and it actually takes a while to peak. It doesn't peak until early to mid-September, right around September 10th. That's because it takes a little while longer for the ocean waters to really reach their peak, and that ocean water is fuel for tropical systems. Hurricane season runs all the way through November 30th, though again, sometimes there can be rare systems after that date. The average hurricane season has 14 named storms, seven of which become hurricanes, and three of those which reach major category three or higher status. As for this year, the experts at Colorado State calling for an above average season in all three categories. But all it takes is one landfall to make it a memorable season. Why the reason for the above average forecast? Well, we are not in El Nino, which tends to favor less hurricane activity in the Atlantic. Instead, we're in La Nina with cool, dry weather over the Pacific, which changes the weather patterns worldwide and tends to create conditions more favorable for hurricanes in the Atlantic Basin. Less wind shear, allowing the storms to grow and not get torn apart, and more instability, a big reason why the forecast is for an above average busy season. We hope you've learned some valuable information here tonight. Our goal is to give you the tips so you're prepared ahead of severe weather. And the team will be here all summer long, bringing you real-time weather updates on air and on the Fox 61 News app. On behalf of me and the rest of the team, have, have a, a good, good night. night.